Hola. So today I'm going to share with you our experience uh, moving to Costa Rica. Just us two, so just Emma and myself. Uh, single mother. Also what I learned about myself just this past week. Firstly, I used a moving service, um, a business from, it's called La Sara Elena, and I actually found her on YouTube. So I made a payment last minute, wrote her again like a month before our move, and said, hey, you know, we're moving in a month. And within the week, she reached out to me. I think it was like the next day, actually. She set me up with everything. So she set me up with, um, she helped me find an apartment. Um, there are people that work, you know, for her that are locals. And that was the main reason, um, one of the main reasons why I went with her. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could have given her more time, but, um, and could have found like a little bit of a better spot. But overall, the apartment is good. We, it's a studio, uh, but for the two of us, but it's still, you know, it still has just everything we need and even the things that we were scared of, right? So like not having hot water or, you know, the price point being a little higher because we're considered gringos here and stuff like that. She set us up on a tour and that was very, very good. I really had a great experience with that. He was very patient with my kiddo. Um, while I was out on the tour, I was able to purchase our electric bike, which is kind of like a, a smaller version of a moped, and put it into the back of his van. He uh, translated a lot. Yes, I have to learn more Spanish, um, but that was just overall a good experience on that tour, getting to see the town, but also um, particularly helping me with a very large purchase. You know, some people go to her for help with car purchases. I specifically just wanted a bike. I knew that prior to coming. Another thing, so she had open text messages with her. Um, we text message, pretty much everyone here text, uses WhatsApp, uh, and we text that way. Businesses, everything. So I was able to openly, at any time, day or night, message her and yeah because you know she's doing stuff she won't get back right away but it's the fact that i don't have to like email her you know specifically go out of my way to call her and stuff like that this way i can actually if i have a really quick question be like you know hey can i i forgot to look up this before coming here can i and i still do that even though we're here like i still will message her every now and then ask about specifics about like our border run coming up etc uh, so I really really liked that as well. Transportation is a must with kiddos. Uh, we tried a couple of days ago to walk to the market. It's 95 degrees here, pretty humid. Uh, so you step outside, you're probably gonna sweat within 10 minutes, most likely. If it was just myself uh, walking those two miles the other day, it would have been fine. Probably, I mean a little hot, but fine. With M, it was pretty torturous because uh, the pace at which you walk with children when you're walking and texting on your phone, that's the similar pace of the walk that it's like with a kid. It's just one step, two steps. So, it's, so it, it took a lot longer than it should have um, or could have if it was just myself. That's why we actually got an e-bike. I had planned to wait a bit to do that, but unfortunately, transportation is absolutely a must. Um, so if you're gonna rent a car in Costa Rica, there's also like you can rent you can rent like all types of, of all types of vehicles here. So you have like e-bikes, electric bikes. Uh, we just charge ours inside of our apartment. Just plug it into the wall and we're good. Um, mopeds, motorcycles. Then you go into cars. And then you go into golf carts, and then they have things here. I think they're called tuk tuks, trek treks, something like that. As far as bus, I have not seen a regular bus go by our apartment complex because we are probably like five minutes from town and walking, I think, 40. <laughs> Yesterday it downpoured, five minutes done. 
In Portland, obviously the opposite, right? Like it's a little bit of drizzle, dark. It's like living under a rock all day. It's disgusting. But here, I mean, it's mostly just dry, so. So what we paid for our e-bike, it actually, I, in my opinion, is the, is the most budget-friendly way to go if you're staying here a while. Like, cause we're moving here, so it's very different. I've heard disgusting prices because not only is it a hot commodity, uh, but people do tend to take advantage of the tourists that come here. And, you know, we do, we make more money than them, most of us. So it's, you know, so it makes sense, right? But, but yeah, I think that um, it was definitely the most budget friendly version was to do an e-bike. So I bought mine 480,000 colonas, which is about $760, which is a fantastic price, even for an e-bike, uh, 400 watts. That's just fantastic because we went to the location, so we had two different locations on the street. Uh, one location, the guy giving us a tour brought us to, and for like the same, almost, almost exactly the same bike, with I think 300 or 350 uh, watts, it was I want to say a thousand. It was 800 or a thousand dollars converted, so it was about 750,000 kilometers. I think that's more. I think that's um, I think that was like 1,200. So it's very typical for an electric bike if you want it to bring you places, and that, that's considerable too uh, for the wattage. If you're going to go uphill, downhill, that kind of thing. Uh, or if it, you're just driving straight on a solid, nice road. For us, we're on, we're on a pretty good road, but we want the capability to go elsewhere, to go more inland, maybe Monte Verde, maybe La Fortuna, right? I love how everyone who travels always talks about traveling light. Everyone's like, travel light, you don't need everything. Well, as an extreme minimalist, I thought I was good, right? Uh, no. Four suitcases later, with just M and me, mind you, he's almost five, so all me, <laughs> and his booster seat. So that was fun. Um, I'm not going to do that again. I don't care what we leave behind at this point. I, I sincerely, here's the thing, so I have a plan to, you know, in time buy like a tree house, bungalow, that's why we're here. And so to make a home out of this place for at least until I probably get bored again. So I brought my curtains and I brought both my hammocks. That, that one makes sense, right? But the curtains, like they don't sell curtains here. I just really love them. But that's the downfall of it is that I, I attached myself to an item, right? So yes, I'm leaving them. I'm leaving one of our larger suitcases. By larger, I mean uh, we have two 24 inch and two 22, 20 inch carry-ons. And so the places that we live, I tried to not get uh, our first apartment fully furnished because I don't like furniture, but I'm actually glad I did. I didn't bring pots and pans and this place, I mean, it has like dish soap, hand soap, uh, toilet paper, things that, you know, it's nice to have the first night, right? Like I don't have to run out, I didn't have to run out to the market, and I don't know if you can hear the bird, but I didn't have to run out to the market and get a bunch of stuff just to be comfortable. So that was really nice. Uh, also, it's very, and I have to say this, it's very affordable where we are, even though, you know, some areas and some places can, you know, s skyrocket their prices during dry season. It still is technically affordable to uh, American apartments. So here, full disclosure, I pay 800 US dollars a month, which includes internet, electricity, uh, cable if we want it. Um, water, everything, and fully furnished. But if I had given them enough time, probably could have found something even cheaper with not, you know, with no furniture, because that makes sense, right? 
and certain locations right now I've looked on Airbnb for a whole month is it runs to about $1,200 max for like full homes. So yeah, so coming from America, even that is like, okay, I could do that, right? Never had lived outside of the US before. The first couple of nights I was anxiety ridden, but to be fair, I can find myself having anxiety quite often anyway, from just not yet having um, certain comforts. And so moving on to the next step of our downsizing, aside from, you know, getting rid of things that I didn't need items, I'll be downsizing certain men mentalities, um, certain mindset and this is one of the main main reasons why I decided to move somewhere that's very unlike uh, where we're coming from is so that to break out of these comfort zones a lot of these comforts were bringing me kind of a depression I was, I was put into a very depressive state too comfortable uh, with not just where we were location wise our everyday events, yeah, I could have just changed those, right? But it's also about about expectations on others and on myself. So I don't like living a normal suburban life. I mean, obviously, just a different lifestyle. Meeting new people and being forced to learn a new language. So that goes into my next step on this journey. I know very little Spanish and I thought we would get by fine just being, you know, an ignorant person going into another country uh, thinking that because it's high in tourism they would know English and I'd get by fine, but most people here do not speak much English. A lot of them get by, a lot of people, you know, nod their head and say, yes, I understand, you know, here is what you need. They can understand English, but if you want to actually make friends with the locals, if you actually want to build relationships with people, you've learned Spanish. I mean, people from all over the world are here. We have um, neighbors from Canada, from France, from from everywhere, and but the common language will be Spanish. So it's not going to be English because they are French and they're, you know. And so, so overall, our journey this week has actually gone by smoother than expected. I mean, yes, sorry for the background noise, but yes, I had to make a purchase last minute, my bike. I had to, you know, let go of some comforts here and there, uh, such as we walked in, there was a big spider, first thing walking in on the wall. I'm not usually scared of spiders. This one was hard to kill, yes. Um, but, you know, stuff like that, I mean, that's just, that's gonna happen anywhere. And my job working online is gonna be anywhere. We're very fortunate to have this flexibility. Uh, and this is something I've been trying to build for years and years is to have this flexibility so that we can do stuff like this. The main message to myself on this journey, making my first purchase for the move, I think that was my flight plan. I was actually planning on uh, Spain for a while, still am, I'm not, I still want us to live in Spain at some point, but I did spend the last two years knowing that Costa Rica was for us. On and off, I went back and forth to some other places, but, and I kept trying to tell myself, you know, oh, I'm gonna, when I save this much money, we're gonna go. When I, you know, do it the exact right way that it's supposed to be done, especially with a kid, you know, that's what I'm gonna do. And that didn't end up happening exactly to plan because nothing does, right? So I eventually, I think I had half the amount I wanted to have in my savings. I think I, I had half the planning done that I wanted to plan. But at the end of the day, I said, I don't want to sit here for two more years, you know, coming up with another bill, another bill, another thing happened, another thing happened. Things, it's life, things are gonna happen no matter where you are. So where do you wanna be? Where do you wanna wake up when things happen? And for me, that was, you know, here. A message to myself was like, I could've came sooner. You know, I just, I had um, the scarcity of, well, the security isn't gonna be there, right? 
but that's a huge, huge part of this is I had to break out of that comfort that I'm not gonna have the security. Did I have the security back at back in, you know, Oregon? No, of course not. But I had the sense of security. I thought I had the security because every day was just the same old day. It was very, it was very familiar to me. So I had that false sense of security. Yeah, so we're here. And we're going to be next stop after our lease is up here. I really want to go more inland. I really want to see these tree houses that I have been planning on buying. I just want to get a feel for living inside of one, obviously. Um, it will be a little while in savings until we can either build one or buy one. Um, but that's why we're here, is for the experience, so. Thank you.